Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me again, and I am so excited to for this video actually because it has taken me a whole month. I had the idea, and I'm so happy that I've actually put this into reality, and it has come to be something that is real right now. And before we, I say anything else or take you to how I did my kitchen renovation i want to say thank you so much for you that you have chosen to subscribe to my channel and also if it's your first time here on my channel karibu karibu sana and i'm so happy to have you here thank you for sticking around with me and thank you for choosing to stay here so that we can grow together and see where this journey will take us and i'm so 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 excited this is an idea that i got like a couple of months ago and I was sitting in the living room and I, because I have an open kitchen, I was sitting in the living room and I was looking at my kitchen. I'm like, I really want to like the tiles are just irritating my eyes. I don't like the color of the cabinets. And I started researching on how to renovate a rental kitchen budget friendly. Yes, not robbing the bank, but budget friendly. And it got me inspired to also film it film it <laughs> film it and show you guys how i did everything so let's get right into the video and i hope this will inspire you to also renovate your space and make it homey and make it how you've always wanted to do it of course we have to start with a before picture of how my kitchen used to look like I must say when I first got into this apartment, I really loved the apartment. I loved the kitchen, I loved the natural lighting, and I also loved the space. But after some time, I didn't really like how the tiles were and the cabinets. They didn't match each other and it was not my kind of style. So thanks also to Pinterest, I was able to pin some of the kitchens that I always wanted to have and I had an idea. My idea was to go for a minimal looking kitchen with a theme of grey and white. So the first thing I needed to do for this whole renovation was to remove all the cabinets from the counters so that it will be easier for me to cover them with the wallpaper. I will link down in the description box what items I used, how many wallpapers I used, how much they were going for and where I got them. Oh, mm -hmm. 
After I was done removing all the kitchen cabinets from the counters, it was time for me to remove the handles from the kitchen cabinets because I was looking to have a flat surface area for our smooth wallpaper covering. Once it was done removing all the handles from each cabinet, I went ahead and cleaned them up because I was working with a wallpaper that was meant to be sticky and if the surfaces that I am wallpapering, it's oil or it has some dust, it will not stick well on the cabinet so i had to clean up first and let them dry air dry and then started working on them <laughs> Once I was done cleaning up the cabinets, it was now time for me to cover them with the wallpaper. But first, I needed to make the glue paste because the glue comes separately from the wallpaper. I needed water and I needed a starring rod. The glue powder comes in a powdered form and it's very eco-friendly. No chemicals added. It's all made from potatoes. Potatoes? yes the one we make french fries with so you put it in a basin and add water into it and then keep on stirring it till it dissolves in the water another thing i realized is the more i kept on adding water to the glue powder it kept on adding up in quantity and in size Well, working on the cabinets was really easy. I thought it would be complicated, but I found that it was so easy to work on them because I had previously cut out the wallpaper according to each cabinet size 
all I just needed to do was to roll up the glue paste on the surface of the cabinet, making sure the cabinet is fully covered with the wallpaper. Then I went over with the wallpaper and firmly positioned it over the cabinet, pressing firmly onto it. And using a squeegee, I just removed the air bubbles that were forming on the inside of the wallpaper. Well, if you don't have a squeegee, you can use a credit card or a card that comes with the SIM card, the cards that we buy with SIM cards. So just flat use it to smoothen it out and remove the air bubbles. Make sure where you're working on is clean and very dry with no water spillage. Otherwise, the water might ruin the wallpaper, which is very unlikely. And also, don't worry how to cover the cabinet. Just cover it how you would cover a gift box, or yeah, how you just how you would just cover. Uh, gifts for somebody and also don't worry if the first one doesn't come out okay definitely the rest will come out perfectly also do not worry if you cover the holes of the cabinet after it dries up just use an exacto knife or a knife or a razor blade to just trace over the holes that needs to be screwed back to the counters Well, the cabinets were outside drying up. It was time for me to walk on the walls in the kitchen. And first I needed to clean it up again from oil or any dust that might have formed on it. On this part here, I'd wanted to paint, but after some thought, I thought it would look really beautiful with a wallpaper on it. Just like the cabinets, I went ahead and rolled over the glue paste and then placed the wallpaper on it. Easy peasy.
In case you have any questions, please feel free to put them on the comment sections and I will reply to all of them. thousand years later.
Well, after everything was covered up and dressed with in wallpaper, I had to screw back the cabinets back to the counters. And if you're planning to do this, do not worry of how the inside would look like because it only takes a second to just open your kitchen cabinet and then close it. Remove what you want and then close it immediately. Or if you have like more rolls of the wallpaper you can just use it to cover the whole of it to each their own i didn't care i did this because it's rental again it's not permanent it's just the outer part that really mattered also after i finished up with this renovation covering everything i did a major major decluttering which i really advise because this way you'll get to get rid of of things that you don't really need like plastics um cups that are broken or glasses <laughs> This was my favorite part of this whole renovation, covering the countertop with this beautiful marble contact paper that I had been looking for for a long time but thank god a lady came through for me. I found the lady on Gigi, I'll also add her details on the description box. She delivered it to me and I really really loved it. It was easy to work with. It's just a peel and stick. It didn't come with a separate glue. It's you just peel off the paper on the back side and then use it. Also it has the small boxes which made it very easy to cut according to the measurements I was using and also i would if i did it wrongly i would just pull it up and then work do it again like stick it again also one thing i love about this contact paper it makes everything so bright and nice and exquisite and even if you spill water on it you just wipe it off and off you go it does not absorb any water i love it as you can see i have it very close to my sink i just love this this is my favorite part of the kitchen also i chose this marble contact paper because it would work perfectly as a flat lay when i'm taking pictures of food or pictures of my product yeah, i just love it every time i look at my countertop right now it just makes me so happy really happy So oh.
And that's it guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I did creating it. And I hope I've also inspired you to just create your own space and your own dream kitchen. Till next video. Bye.